Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today we're getting back to work on our series, painting this guitar with the deluxe finishing kit from Oxford Supply. Now, I've already talked about this in the prior videos. Hopefully you've seen them. If not, go back and take a look. But this kit has everything you need to do a vintage style nitrocellulose paint job on a guitar. It's not the full vintage one. Um, it doesn't have like that super vintage formula that cracks really easily, the lacquer but you can definitely get that from Oxford Supply. The kit and that vintage clear coat, if that's your preference, are available from Oxford Supply at their website. There's gonna be a link to that in the description below if you want it. And they're also available through Solo Music Gear, now Solo Guitars, both of those websites work. There is a link to that in the description as well. Um, that one's an affiliate link, so if you pick something up through there, it helps me out. If you're gonna grab it through the Oxford Supply website and they ask you where you heard about them and you say it was me, that also helps me out. But that's not the important part. The important part here is helping you out with a tutorial on how to do this paint job. So let me quickly recap in case you haven't seen it. Uh, we've got a Stratocaster body here. We sanded this guy to about 320 grit, I believe. And then we sprayed with, again, this kit has everything you need. We sprayed with the sanding sealer to start with. Did a couple coats of that, got the grain all sealed up. If this were an open grain wood, we would have used the grain filler first before the sanding sealer. So we would have done both. Grain filler first, that also comes in the kit. Then we moved on to this white primer to set, one, a very smooth base, which the sanding sealer does as well, but this helps, and two, a uniform colored base. Now it's time to get this sanded, cleaned, and ready to go with the white primer. So the next step is our white primer from Oxford. I'm looking in the drawers for my sanding block. Gotta be around here somewhere. There it is. So I'm gonna get this sanded up now. I've already got some paper on here, but what do I want? Um, let's go with some 400 grit. Yeah, there we go. Nice fresh sheet of 400 grit. We're going to get this sanded down, ready to go. Then we're going to clean it off with a little bit of wax and grease remover. And then we're going to fire it back on our spin twist paint rig and hit it with the white primer. This stuff, high solids content, says it right on here. Shake it, shake it a lot. Okay. Shake it for 90 seconds is what it says. Say easily that you want to you want to shake the heck out of this thing because if you don't it's high solids it'll jam up it won't spray properly and more importantly you won't get the effect that it's supposed to get because the solids will be stuck in the bottom so just make sure you're giving it a good shake for a nice long period of time um, okay let's get this quickly sanded this is all clean this won't take long at all i should probably wear a mask for this but the sanding for this part is pretty straightforward we just want a nice, smooth, even surface. Make sure you're cleaning your paper um, for the primer to go on. So just get it nice and flat. Check for the, this um, sanding sealer is, is a little glossy, not really glossy, but a touch glossy. So check for gloss spots. And if you see them, you know you need to sand a little bit more in those areas because those are low spots. All right, the spots that you've sanded correctly the shine will be gone. Okay. That's good. Carefully in the curves, probably better to do it by hand if you're not experienced with this, but I like using these round sanding blocks for this. Flatter sanding blocks work just as well, if not better for the flat surfaces. And by flat, I mean rectangular. Okay. That'll do it. Now this stuff builds up pretty high. So if there are minor imperfections in this layer, we can deal with those at the primer stage. But why leave them, right? We want this as perfect as possible. Get it right at every stage and then you don't have to worry. Now you'll have seen, some, some of you will have noticed, I'm mostly standing linearly. That's just because it's efficient. Once I have my sealer built up on here, which I do, I can sand in any direction I want. But if you can keep, so for this kind of stuff to avoid tearing my paper, but if you can keep your sanding direction consistent, it does help. It makes things a little smoother. You don't have to worry so much about crisscrossing scratches. So when possible, that is my preference. All right, gonna get my edges done now. Then we'll wipe this down, 
check for low spots and go ahead and get spraying. guys sorry for the confusion there uh, too much footage and not enough keeping track of what goes in what video but anyway we're doing our second coat of the white primer here the first one was in another video where I did some tips and tricks for getting an even coat of paint on a guitar so something along those lines tips and tricks for spray painting guitars but the gist of it is the first coat went on nice and light the second coat is also going on nice and light just to even everything out the first coat doesn't white look even when you finish it but the second one should look perfectly uniform and this one will. You'll have seen that I do the edges first and then I come back and do the front and back afterward usually the back first followed by the front. I'll explain that when we come back in a few minutes after we talk about the metallic. I'm going to use the same technique uh, essentially to do the metallic and I will discuss why and if you want it in more detail it's also in that other video about tips and tricks for spray painting a guitar. So we're basically done this coat and we'll be coming back to spraying shortly. So this is now a nice even white. Okay, we did sand in between those with 400 grit. So we did sanding sealer, 400 grit, and then the white primer. And now we've got a light scuff done on this. I did this off camera. You guys have watched me sand enough. Light scuff done on this with 800 grit and we're moving on to the ice blue metallic. Now, let me be clear about something because I do have a specific tutorial on metallic painting. If I were doing a normal color and not a metallic, I wouldn't have gone that, that fine. I probably would have done a 600, maybe even a 400, <coughs> pardon me. But because this is a metallic, I went 800. And the reason for that is the metallic particles, okay? We've got these tiny little mica particles in here that really shine, really stand out and those will pool and, and you know, they'll change uh, the appearance if you don't have a very smooth finish. So you want something smooth, otherwise you can end up with those kind of pooling and, and, and just showing the lines a little bit. So that's what we've done so far. I'm gonna get this shaken up real well. This is the Ice Blue Metallic, again, from Oxford Supply, located in Ontario, Canada, but they ship throughout the US and I think maybe even beyond that now. Um, yeah, we're gonna, get this shaken up. I'm going to throw on a mask and we're going to do our spray work. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, if you've been watching my channel, you know this, this spin twist spray rig that this is hooked up to. So this, you can get a drying rack for it too. This thing makes spray painting much easier. If you're only doing like one guitar, fine, maybe not worth it for you. Um, but for me, who does quite a few of them, this thing is 100% worthwhile for me. It speeds things up a lot. I did have my own version of this that I made before, um, which I've basically now thrown in the garbage because this works so much better, it's not even funny. So I'm gonna get this moved over to the booth because uh, I don't wanna spray lacquer all over the place in here if I can avoid it. Get my mask on, get this shaken up, and you can watch how I do this. We're gonna put two coats. We're not gonna wait very long in between because this is nitrocellulose lacquer, so it dries to the touch very quickly. You can recoat very quickly, at least that's how I do it, and uh, it's quite warm in here. so really not going to take long at all. In fact, probably won't even stop filming between coats. I'll probably just spray two passes real quick, see how it looks, and then decide if I need to give it 10, 15 minutes and do a third. Let's get after it. So back to the spraying here, and you'll notice I need to shake this one really well too, although there's not as much particulate matter, not as high solids as those primers, of course, so it's not quite as bad, but you want to get your metallics mixed up really nice. I'm again doing the horns and the edges first. I start with the horns because of the way that I spray them. It's kind of in smaller bursts. And then I can make my way around the edges a little bit more smoothly. And this spin twist spray paint rig makes things a lot easier. You can see how much smoother that goes. Um, so I do that from one side and then from the other. 
and that gives me good coverage generally on the first coat and of course I'm going to come back for a second one anyway you can't do it quite as well with a spray can as you would with a gun but it's still pretty good uh, we've got a really nice fan cap on these Oxford cans so really easy to get a nice coat on these compared to some of the other cans that you find so I'm going 50% overlap I start on the back after I've done my edges of course and then I move on to the front and the reason I generally do it in that order is because every time you spray something it creates overspray and overspray gets on usually the rest of the project and so I start with the edges because getting the overspray on the faces is no problem because I'm going to paint over them after and then I do the back it doesn't really matter between the back and the front but I do the back first in case any overspray gets on the front which is the most important part in my view and then I do the front and as you spray over the overspray it just melts it all into the same coat so not a problem anymore so that's generally why I do it in that order otherwise you would do the you know the back and front first and then you'd go to do the edges and you'd leave kind of a hazy ring around the face and and the back of the guitar where some overspray gets on it and just doesn't quite atomize with the rest of the paint doesn't melt in so you want to avoid that aside from that again pretty straightforward nice even coats even passes 50 percent overlap and try to keep the can the same distance from the project so don't do a pendulum motion you're going back and forth straight across it try to be as robotic as possible um, that's about it you saw how fast I moved from one pass to the next this stuff dries to the touch really quick but you do need to wait a while before you can sand and polish it and whatnot and we'll cover that in the next video when we do our clear coating and probably our sanding and polishing stages so this paint job is going really fast and you can see how good it looks. Stay tuned for the next one. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. As always, have a good one, and I'll see you next time.